Today we're gonna talk about anthropomorphic animals and use Zootopia as an example for some stuff. So right off the bat this video is gonna be furry as all get out. I feel I should probably lean into that. Ah, I have an idea. Be right back. Okay, let's do this thing. Zootopia is a bunny cop movie. Zootopia is a buddy cop movie about the difficult relations between animal species in what is it Zootopia or Zootropolis? Hang on, wh where's the box? Zoomania? What? Anyway, Zootopia uh, is a movie with a strong allegorical connection between animal species and race. This allegory is arguably the core of the movie, and prejudice is with us from the very start of the film. One of the main conflicts of the movie is Judy Hopps, member of a species generally seen as being incapable of police work, proving that anybody can do anything if they put their mind to it, by becoming a successful cop. I am going to be... a police officer! What makes her supposedly unfit for police work is her species. Her parents are bunnies, her siblings are bunnies, and all her children, should she decide to have any, and not adopt, will be bunnies. She's been a bunny from birth, and there is no way for her to ever not be a bunny. This is how the movie presents race. More specifically, what keeps her from just being a cop is that society, and especially the other cops, don't see her as fit. Parking duty. Dismissed. I want to be a real cop. Do you think the mayor asked what I wanted when he assigned you to me? Which is because they see her as lacking in physical strength and size, which they consider essential qualities of a cop. Now, she is comparatively weak and small, this is true because of her species, which she has since birth and will always have, their innate genetic qualities. She makes a good cop anyway, not because the other cops are wrong about her species being inherently weak and small, but because they are wrong about what a cop needs to be. She manages to be an asset due to other qualities, namely resourcefulness and a penchant for blackmail. Of course I could let you off with a warning if you were to glove those trunks and, I don't know, finish selling this nice dad and his son a... A jumbo pop. Actually, it's your word against yours. And if you want this pen, you're going to help me find this poor missing otter, or the only place you'll be selling popsicles is the prison cafeteria. Ice this weasel. All right, all right, all right, please. I'll talk, I'll talk. Jesus Christ, Judy. Another main conflict is Nick Wilde's transformation from a petty criminal to an agent of the law. In the context of the film, the police are a force of good. They're definitely flawed, mired in the same prejudice as everybody else. You think I'm going to believe a fox? And at times incredibly ineffective, but ultimately a positive presence in Zootopia. Hey. What? Who are you? I'm you from the past. I've, I've come to remind you not to get into the police stuff. But... I have so many opinions. No, save them. Stick to the point for fuck's sake. Okay, fine. Anyway, in the context of the movie, the police are basically okay and good. It's just that individual cops are prejudiced and junk. But so is pretty much everybody in the film. The ranger scouts serve as a similar symbol in Nick's backstory. The scouts symbolize a part of lawful, orderly society. Nick wanted to be part of that as a child. His parents got him a uniform, and he was incredibly proud to join. But the other kids made it clear to him that he wasn't wanted here, on account of being a fox. He was never given a chance to show his commitment to this lawful society. He was rejected and ostracized. And this is the inciting incident that led him onto a path of petty crime. Nick's criminality is then a symbol of rejection of society, its norms and the law. Nick wasn't allowed to play by the rules, so he's playing outside the rules, and it's jaded him. But halfway through the movie, Judy and Nick's success opens the door for people like Nick to enter the police force. Nick gets to be part of lawful society and doesn't feel the need to break rules anymore. Hooray! 
Now he gets to be treated like a person, and all he had to do was almost get killed several times in a row. Buddy, one predator, two and up. One thing that works a bit better here is that the children are actually truly wrong about the entire species thing. They attribute to Nick a predatory nature based on his species, but unlike with Judy's rabbit qualities, the movie goes out of its way to show that predators aren't actually predatory. It's simply prejudice. The whole police investigation that forms the core of the plot is laid out in a way to make a statement about racism as well. At first, all signs point to the disappearances being caused by specifically predators going savage. When Judy unwisely says just that at a press conference, it causes a pretty serious backlash against predators in society. People no longer feel safe around predators, or less safe, I should say, because Anti-fox tasers are a thing already. Oh, for goodness sake. It turns out that the cause is in fact a poison administered selectively to predators by a conspiracy of sheep that want predators to stop taking positions of power. The poison has the same effect on anyone. There is nothing genetic about people going savage. It's just a psychoactive drug. The problem isn't a systemic one but a conspiracy of evil sheep who are decidedly not an inherent part of Zootopian society or anything. They're just racist individuals with an agenda of racial hate. The movie decidedly puts the blame for racism on individuals. Racist children, racist terrorists, people who have been told a lie and are now really scared of predators. It posits that if Zootopians stopped underestimating people because of their species, they could solve racism. The problem, according to the film, is people, often good people, being racist. Otherwise, society's fine. But that's neither here nor there. That's not really what this video is about. I only bring this up because no matter how you interpret the portrayal of race or ethnic relations in the movie, these issues are clearly central to the film. And it's not subtle. Go back to the forest, predator! I'm from the savannah! Let's get to the real problem at hand. I would like to draw your attention to the bit with the bunnies on the train with the tiger. The bunnies are terrified because they are afraid that the tiger might go savage, like several other predators have done at this point. Look at the size difference. That tiger is fucking huge compared to the bunnies. That tiger has claws and sharp teeth. Pretty much all adult tigers in the movie look roughly like this one. They're all bigger than bunnies or far stronger all equipped with far more deadly built-in weaponry. But that's not at all how race works. The allegory is severely, horrendously broken. Race is a social construct. Race isn't based in biology, but in social forces. Common ideas of what defines certain races determine who is considered part of what race. Race is, thus, determined by the most superficial characteristics, skin color, the form of one's hair, facial features, manner of speech, and so on. You said this was going to be quick! Well, are you saying that because he's a sloth he can't be fast? Different animal species, however, are more meaningfully different. They vary wildly in physical strength, bodily features, instinctual habit, and so on. All of this is true in Zootopia. Rabbits breed like rabbits, as the movie keeps reminding us. Yes! Your dad, me, your 275 brothers and sisters. I mean, <laughs> I am just a dumb bunny, but we are good at multiplying anyway. We are good at multiplying. Rhinos, bears, and big cats are strong and pretty much impossible to beat in a fight by, say, foxes and bunnies. Wolves can't help themselves but howl at the moon once somebody else initiates it. This scene is supposed to depict racial hysteria an unreasonable fear based in racist prejudice. The movie tries to tell you that there was never anything to legitimately worry about. The savage stuff could have happened to anyone. People's fear of predators was unfounded. But was it really? Look at that tiger. I mean, I'm sure he's nice and peaceful, and I'm sure tigers generally are. 
But the fact that he could just eat these bunnies and there would be absolutely nothing they could do about it, and all this due to how he was born and how the rabbits were born, makes this read not like an allegory for race as it functions, but for race as racists think it functions. Oh boy, okay, uh, th this is where this shit gets dark. Hope you're ready for this. According to the racists that like to refer to themselves as heavy air quotes here, race realists, race is a meaningful system of categorizing people into groups with different characteristics that make them more or less suited to certain tasks and whatnot. Zootopia at least mostly dodged the bullet of mapping specific species to specific races in the real world, but by not thinking through their allegory, they accidentally made a film that compares race and ethnicity in humans to species and animals in a way that causes severe problems. The idea of comparing different ethnicities of humans to different species of animals has a long-standing tradition in reactionary racist and fascist propaganda. The Nazis likened Jewish people to all manner of things, but among them were rats and spiders. Nazi propaganda tried really hard to link Jewish people to literal vermin in people's minds. American World War II propaganda shows Japanese people as bats and rats. In general, fascists and other racists are really fond of conceptualizing different races as different species to legitimize their fear-mongering. If you can convince someone that people of some races are just inherently stronger or weaker, smarter or less smart, more sexually forceful or less so, you can then make the argument that oppressing other races is reasonable and necessary. Look again at the shot with the tiger and the bunnies. It says unwittingly that maybe they should be afraid. After all, the tiger is huge and has claws and they are just little bunnies. This is obviously not what the movie is trying to say, and I would be acting in very bad faith if I were to argue that it does. I just feel the movie severely undermines itself and its vaguely progressive message by framing things this way. It betrays either a careless metaphor or some really harmful ideas held by the creators of this movie about what race is. Now you might say, well, what's the point then? You can't make a story in which characters are animals and it makes a point about race, ethnicity and racism? Not at all, Mr. Strawman, sir. There is, in fact, a really damn good counterexample. And this is where the cat ears come off. Mouse is a comic created by Jewish-American artist Art Spiegelman and released between 1980 and 1991. It is, first and foremost, a biography of Art Spiegelman's father and Holocaust survivor Vladek Spiegelman, framed inside an autobiographical narrative of how the comic itself came to be. Mouse is interesting in that it also uses an animal metaphor to tell its story about racial hate, despite it being non-fiction. In Mouse, people are depicted as animal species based on ethnicity and or nationality. Jewish people are depicted as mice, hence the name. Germans are cats, Americans are dogs. You see the obvious reference to American cartoon logic, yeah? Polish people are depicted as pigs, French people are frogs, and the British, uh, hang on, uh, are, there, are, there, are there Brits in here? Mm. Oh, oh my god. <clears throat> and yet I feel it avoids the pitfalls that Zootopia falls into. How does it do that? The metaphor is very thin. The anthropomorphic animals work kind of like masks. Jewish people are referred to as Jews, not as mice. Germans are referred to as Germans, not as cats. It's not a world of animals, it's a world of people of different ethnicities simply drawn as animals. Natural size disparity between species is eliminated. Everybody is human-sized, nobody actually retains any biological advantages or disadvantages their species would have. Spiegelman put a lot of thought into the symbology he was putting into the comic. A lot of it is a direct reference to the way Nazis conceptualized race and how they view different ethnicities. Jewish people are mice as a nod to Nazi propaganda depicting them as literal vermin to be exterminated. Any value that can be extracted from them is incidental. Complete eradication is the goal. Germans as cats then follows pretty easily. Cats hunt and kill mice. 
By extension, Americans are dogs, because in cartoon logic, dogs hunt cats. But also because dogs, more than cats, are known for being very diverse, what with the great diversity of different races of dogs. This was very important to Spiegelman, depicting the USA as a diverse nation. Polish people are depicted as pigs because pigs are production animals. They exist to humans to be killed for meat, but they are not to be eradicated entirely. The Nazi plan for Polish people was to serve as slaves to build their empire. And so on and so forth. The comic knowingly invokes fascist propaganda in an effort to counter and subvert it. The Jewish mice are drawn in a way that makes them look very appealing, rather than the hideous depictions used in actual propaganda. The German cats are often sinister and scary. Mouse also invokes cartoons like Mickey Mouse and Tom and Jerry. To the Nazis, Jewish people are vermin. In American cartoons, the mouse is the underdog, the protagonist, the one we root for. The comic is extremely aware of the inherent problems of the metaphor and where it breaks down, and it purposefully draws your attention to these problems. This is especially powerful because it lays bare some of the logical holes in Nazi ideology. In part 1, chapter 6, Vladik and Anya are looking for shelter after the ghetto they lived in was massacred by the Nazis. In order to avoid being detected and reported by collaborators among the Polish populace, they have to avoid being recognized as Jewish. Now, in the real world, there isn't an obvious difference in outward appearance between a Jewish Pole and non-Jewish Pole, but due to the animal metaphor, they are very different. So, Vladik and Anya wear pig masks to look Polish. Part 2, Chapter 1 starts with the artist and his wife, Françoise, having a discussion about what animal she should be depicted as. She is French and not ethnically Jewish, but as she points out, she converted to the Jewish faith. Every other French person in the comic is depicted as a frog, but as you can see, Françoise is a mouse. She is an edge case that draws attention to the question of what makes one Jewish. In Part 2, Chapter 2, a man at the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp tries to convince the guards that he is neither Jewish nor Polish, but German, and doesn't belong in the camp. For a single panel, he turns from a mouse into a cat, because Vladek simply didn't know whether he was telling the truth or not. In the panel where the Nazi guards murder him, he is a mouse again, because to them, he was Jewish. In part 2, chapter 5, Vladek and Anya stay with a married couple in Hannover. A German man and a Jewish woman, a cat and a mouse, married with children. And note here that Spiegelin didn't have to depict the children, as they are not critical to understanding the story. But here they are, little mouse children with the stripes of a tabby cat. Once again, the animal metaphors purposefully shown to be flawed. According to Nazi ideology, there are very clear and real biological differences between them and Jewish people, or between them and Slavic people. To them, the difference between races is clear and meaningful. Mouse starts from this hypothesis, depicting ethnicities as clearly, obviously disparate. But as the very real story of a Holocaust survivor shows, the lines that Nazis and other racists like to draw are in fact very blurry and very artificial. Because of all this, the comic never ends up giving the impression that relations between ethnicities are comparable to those between species. In fact, the comic very clearly states that they are not. That the metaphor is flawed and needs to be handled carefully, especially in the parts where it doesn't work. So what am I actually trying to say here? It's definitely not that Zootopia is a bad movie or that you should hate it. I myself actually like it a lot. It's beautifully made, it's exciting and fun, and it has the sexiest tigers that I've ever... This is more about a nagging feeling that I have that Zootopia, as it tries to gently introduce children to the concept of racism, fumbles severely and depicts it as something it is not. That it might have a hand in giving people a flawed understanding of ethnicity, race and racism. And Mouse shows that it's not inherently the animal metaphor that causes this. Through expert, thoughtful handling, it can be used to great effect. Okay, now we talk about how the police are inherently a load of utter...
thank you for watching. This video took me very long to make. Please let me know what you think in the comments. In case you haven't read Mouse yourself, I strongly recommend it. It is an absolutely stunning, thought-provoking, finely crafted work of art. As you can likely imagine, given the subject matter, the comic is quite grim, often disturbing and depressing. So before giving it a read, make sure you're mentally stable enough to handle it. If you read it and want to know more about it and how it came to be, I also recommend reading Meta Mouse, in which Art Spiegelman discusses a lot of the thoughts and personal experiences that went into the comic, and which I used as one of my main resources for this video. It's a fascinating read and it comes with a CD-ROM with just a ton of additional material like sketches, photos, essays and audio recordings of interviews Art conducted with his father. Alright non-binary pals and guys and gals, see you next time.